Let's take a look at a few more examples of using joins for some meaningful computations. Let's say we want to compute the average delay by destination. So we might do something like this. Flights select destination arrival delay. By average delay, we mean average arrival delay. And we now do a group by destination and summarize average delay equals mean arrival delay in a dot rm equals true. Right? So basically, we select only destination and arrival delay. We group by destination and then calculate the average of the arrival delay for each destination. So the table F now contains the results of this operation. Now the reason we are storing this in a table F is because we are going to plot it. Of course, I could have gone ahead and plotted it directly right here, but I just don't want to have so much code in one page. I just want to split the discussion across two slides. That's the reason I created this temporary variable called F. I need not have done that. Okay, so now we want to plot the average delay by destination. So we do airports, right? Because we want to plot it, we need the latitude longitude. And because we need the latitude longitude, we of course need to get uh, join the destination airports to the airports table so that we can go there and get the latitude longitude. So we say airports right join F. Okay, again, I could have done. Uh, inner join, that would have been fine because we would have joined everything. But we are emphasizing the fact that we are only interested in the destination airports. We are not interested in the other airports. So this could very well have been an inner join. So airports right join F and then we are mapping by FAA code of the airport to the destination code in the flights extract from the flights table. And then we are plotting latitude, longitude, etc. Okay. So once again, of course, we have not eliminated Hawaii uh, and uh, Anchorage. We have not eliminated Honolulu and Anchorage. So again, we get those two outliers. But now what we are doing is we've got the color by the delay. Okay, So the longer delays are light colored, the shorter delays are dark colored. So that's what we are seeing here. Okay, But in general, uh, shades of color are very difficult for the human eye uh, to interpret. Right. So if you look at it, especially if it's not very large, the distinction between the shapes doesn't come out all that well. So what we might want to do is to add yet another visual cue to uh, indicate the amount of delay more more dramatically. Okay, But at the same time, what we will also want to do is to get rid of Anchorage and Honolulu. So we are doing that again. So we are saying flights filter destination not equal to Honolulu destination not equal Anchorage. And then we select the arrival delay group by destination summarize. This is all like before. Now we are doing a join to the airports. Again, this could have been an inner join. Didn't have to be a left join. Dest uh, and then we are mapping destination to uh, FAA code. And then we are doing the plot. Okay, But this time, because the color alone was not giving us a clear enough picture of the delays, I said let the size of the points also be proportional to the delay. Right. Again, this time I said make the size proportional to the square of the average delay just to dram dramatize the differences. Okay. So when you do that, uh, what you get is a plot that looks like this. Okay. We left out the color and we are just showing it by uh, the size. And now you get a good picture of which airports have higher delays. But of course, we have to be clear that the size is proportional to the square of the delay not to the delay itself. right? So we have to understand that this is a dramatized version of the delays. But what you're seeing here is uh, this airport is probably Atlanta. Okay, I'm not too sure. Could be uh, Charlotte. Not too sure, but we can take a look at that. And uh, you've got some airports which are somehow have, which somehow have higher delays. Okay, so that's another uh, way by which you can uh, overlay some information on top of maps. We might want to even further dramatize this by adding color. So we've got size and we've also got color. So this sort of removes some of the overlaps that were occurring earlier. Right? So in the earlier map, we got some serious overlapping going on in some of the areas, especially here and here. Now those get separated if you add some color. Right? So sometimes uh, redundancy of this form actually seems to help. Okay. Now, of course, we could have set color instead of making color proportional to the square of the average delay. We could have made the color proportional to just the average delay. Uh, but then again, the 
the discrimination may not have been as much okay so again this is just showing you some additional techniques that you can have to visualize the data more clearly okay so let's see if we want to add the origin and destination lat and long to flights that is latitude and longitude of the origin and destination we want to add that to flights right this again we saw earlier we'll have to join flights to airports twice okay and uh, again this could have been an inner join because we are only interested in uh, matches proper matches right so left join doesn't really make any sense here because we know that every airport in the flight table also occurs in the airport table okay and again if there is no match we are not going to get the latitude and longitude so there really is no point okay so we got this uh, and once you have this you're going to get the latitude longitude of both uh, the origin and the destination if we wanted to be more specific we could have selected that as well uh, another question we may have is does the age of a plane impact delays right age of a plane being derived from the year in which the plane was made remember the plane table has a tail number for every plane and it also has the year associated with the plane which is the year in which the plane was manufactured okay so we want to ask a question is it that older planes are somehow more delayed okay now this is unlikely to be the case because after all if the plane is older you may say well it goes slower but then the airlines would have planned the departure and arrival times based on the characteristics of the plane right so one would not expect that age of a plane would impact delays but it's worth examining uh, again just to illustrate joints because the age of the plane we are going to get from uh, from the plane table and of course the flight information the delay information is in the flight table so this is a good example of joining right so we can say flights and then of course we are going to filter the flights to only those flights which were not cancelled and this time I am treating cancelled as there is no arrival delay that is arrival delay is NA okay now of course that could be the case if uh, people simply forgot to enter the arrival delay but we know from our data that when arrival delay is NA departure delay is also NA so selecting uh, not uh, east dot NA arrival delay is good enough for us to find flights which were not cancelled once again we are grouping by the tail num right because we want to talk about age of a plane that means we want to group the data by tail num which is the individual aircraft and then calculate the average delay for that particular aircraft okay so flights filtered group by tail number summarize average delay is mean arrival delay and then of course we want to get the age of the plane or basically we want to plot it by year of manufacture right so we say left join planes by equals tail num right again we have to say whenever we are joining flights to planes we have to specify by equals tail num otherwise the year will also come into contention for joining and that will create a problem and then we plot uh, year on the x-axis and average delay on the y-axis average delay is what we calculated here right so if you do that you find the plot looks like this right so pretty much the smooth line is just completely straight almost okay so although you do see that there are more points for more recent planes and fewer points for older planes now what does that mean that simply means that you know there are not that many older planes flying in the year 2013 right planes made in the uh, you know 80s or I'm not able to see that clearly but planes made long ago are not not too many of them are still flying in the year 2013 when we're still flying in the year 2013 but there are lots of flights for planes which are uh, more recently manufactured so that explains why there's a concentration of points here but if you look at the smooth line you're seeing the smooth line pretty much going straight right so the age of the plane the older planes are all here the more recent younger planes are here but the average delay is not affected okay of course more of the average delays are are here that is happening simply because there are more flights happening here and you will do you will definitely see some scattered uh, delays by particular planes okay so it is possible that there were some particular aircraft which uh, had uh, you know 
different kinds of uh, mechanical issues okay the persistent mechanical issues and therefore those uh, you know they may not have fully corrected them so if they corrected flight once uh, or they you know put it uh, for flight it gets delayed they fix some problem they fly it and the next time again the problem shows up and so on till they really fix the problem so these are isolated cases of delays the bulk of the points are all right here okay so we can answer the question of does the age of a plane impact delays with an emphatic no okay so we can add the origin weather data to flights we can do that by just doing flights left join weather okay but again we have to be careful because when we join flights to weather we want to join only by year month day origin and hour okay we don't want the time hour to be considered you know because there is a column called time hour in flights there is also a column called time hour in uh, in weather but we don't want to use that in the join okay since the join columns are unspecified when you run this query you it'll tell you that it's joining by all of these again using all the common columns but of course we already know from our diagram that we should not be using time hour also in our join okay so the way we do this this of course is going to give us the wrong results because we shouldn't be using this as part of the join so the way to do it right is to explicitly specify the columns we are joining by okay again we have to specify each column although they all have the same name the columns by which we are supposed to join all have the same name in both the tables we are still having to explicitly enumerate each of them simply because there is one other column that also has the same name so if we did not say by equals this then it would have included time hour also and we would have got the wrong results okay so in order to add the origin weather data to the flights we have to do this while we join okay so we are doing this to specify only the columns that we want so again we can add the destination weather data to flights but of course the weather table doesn't actually have information for the destination airports it it has information only for the origin airports but here what i'm showing you is if it did have the information for the destination airports then we could have joined it like this okay instead of saying origin equals origin we would have said destination equals origin the reason this is origin is in the weather table they've called the airport code as origin just to make it match up with the column name in the flights table they just want to make emphasize that the weather table contains information only about the origin airports okay so that's that's really why it is so if we want to find it for destination airports we would have had to say destination equals origin but of course this will not produce any results because the weather table doesn't have information for anything other than the three uh, origin airports okay now we have looked at joins now uh, dplyr has these functions inner join left join right join and full join which we have learned how to use so far now the traditional r without dplyr also had functions to perform all these operations okay the main function was merge and we could have done all of these with the merge function okay it's just that the syntax here is a little more clean right so look at this this is a little bit more complicated right for example you can say merge xy to get just a pure inner join that part is fine merge xy all dot x equals true is basically left join right because x is the first table y is the second table and again this is a right join all dot y right again if you want to get a total join or a full join you say all dot x equals true all dot y equals true okay so this tends to be a little more verbose and that is why we use the dplyr functions and the dplyr functions also tend to be more efficient a little more fast okay so let's try and find uh, the most popular destinations okay in terms of number of flights so we are creating a table called top dest flights count destination sort equals true right remember count is the short form for group by dest summarize uh, n equals n open parent close parent so count is a short form for counting the occurrences 
of a particular categorical variable. So here we are counting the destinations and we are saying sort equals true to just arrange it in descending order of the count. And then we want only the top 10, so we say head 10, which means give me only the first 10 rows. Okay, And then if you print out top dest, you'll see that this is the result. Okay, So it turns out that uh, Chicago ORD is Chicago O'Hare that has the maximum number of flights, Atlanta is the next, and so on and so on. Okay, so let's try to find the flights that go to the most popular destinations. That is, we want to filter the flights table such that we want to retain only the flights that go to those top 10 flights, uh, top 10 destinations. Okay, so we can say flights filter dest in top dest dollar dest. Okay, top dest is just the table we calculated in the earlier slide, the, the head 10, the top 10 destinations. And we are just saying, of course, top dest is a table. One of the columns is dest. So we are taking all the destinations in that particular table. And then we are only filtering the flights by saying, give me only those flights whose destination is in the top 10 destinations. Now, this works well. In fact, what you're seeing here is that in some sense, we are joining the flights table with the top dest table, right? Because we are using both of them. We are not using a join function, but we are involving both of those tables, right? So now what this takes us to is a scenario where uh, we might want to find rows in a particular table that have a match in another table. Or we might want to find rows in a table that do not have a match in the other table. Notice that the result of this is going to come only from the flights table because we are filtering the flights table. But another table is involved in the whole process. Okay, So to do these kinds of operations, there is a more general way and a more uh, simple way to do this. And for that, we will take a look at two other kinds of joins in the next lecture.